Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the psychological thriller films from 2018, titled Greta. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie opens in the bustling subway of Manhattan, New York, where a woman has just got out of the metro. On the other side of the town, we are introduced to our waitress, a charming and beautiful young woman named Frances. After work, she catches the metro as usual to head home, but then she spots an unattended bag nearby. She picks it up with the intention of returning it to the owner. Inside, she finds an ID card, revealing that it belongs to a certain Greta Hiddick. Frances goes to the lost and found to hand the bag, but the department is closed. In the next scene, we see Frances at home, where she lives with her best friend, Erica. The latter curiously opens the bag and finds cash, and she proposes that they use this money to treat themselves to a spa. But the good girl Frances asserts that she's going to return it to the owner. The following day, she arrives outside Greta's door, using the address from her ID, and explains her predicament. Greta, a lady probably in her 50s, claims that she had been looking for her purse all around and is extremely grateful to Frances. She invites the young woman inside for some hot tea. Once inside, Frances reveals that she is originally from Boston, and that she has relocated here very recently. She says that she's staying at her best friend's apartment in the city. As the two continue talking, some banging noises come from the wall near her piano. This annoys Greta so she asks her neighbors to keep it low. She claims that they are remodeling the place. After this, Greta reveals that her husband passed away several years ago due to a disease. Her daughter's picture is also in the room, but she doesn't talk much about her. Here, Greta starts playing the piano, while explaining that she used to have a dog in this house, but it died. Now, she is left alone and lonely. Hearing all this, Frances feels sad for the woman, so she offers to help her find a new dog. Greta believes that she's not ready for it, but Frances gives her number in case she changes her mind. Later at home, the apartment phone rings, and it is none other than Greta. She says that she has changed her mind, and now wants to get a dog. Greta asks Frances if they can meet during the weekend, to which the latter happily says yes. After the call ends, we see that Erica is a bit skeptical about the meeting. The scene then cuts to the weekend where the two visit a dog pound. All the dogs here are put to sleep if they aren't adopted within five days of their arrival. Greta asks if any dog is serving its last day here, and the owner directs her to a lovely boy named Morton. Greta likes the dog right away and thus, she adopts it. Later, the two hang out at a park, where Frances clicks several pictures of Greta on her phone. The lady claims to be bad at technology, so Frances teaches her how to send those pictures to other contacts. Here, Frances reveals that her mom died a year ago, and this makes her visibly emotional, so Greta consoles her and offers some words of wisdom. That night, while at home, we see that Greta isn't exactly clueless when it comes to technology, as she is now stalking Frances' social media meticulously. The next Friday, the two once again meet, and go to a nearby church. Later while heading home, Greta is seen talking on the phone with her daughter, Nicola. After the call ends, a curious Francis asks about where Nicola is, to which Greta claims that she's studying in Paris. The two then go to her house where Greta starts playing the piano beautifully. Greta once again gets emotional and says that everyone leaves her, but Francis, who has started liking the old lady, claims that she will always stick by her side. A few days later, Erica is excitedly getting ready for a party, she hopes that her best friend will join her too. However, Frances apologizes and says that she has already promised to hang out with Greta. This obviously enrages Erica, and she believes that the whole situation is weird. She calls out Frances for befriending the old woman, just because she lost her mother last year, but Frances ignores her comments and abruptly leaves. Following this, she goes straight to Greta's house where they start preparing dinner. Once everything is ready, they proceed to set up the table. But when Francis goes to get the candles from the nearby cabinet, she accidentally opens the wrong drawer and sees several handbags, similar to the one she found on the subway. What's weirder is that there are names of the people who returned Greta the bag. 
one of them is a girl named Samantha, and Francis also finds her name. Shocked to the core, she immediately grabs the candles and pretends that she didn't see anything. However, during dinner, she doesn't engage in conversation, and when asked what's wrong, Francis claims that she's not feeling well. Greta suggests that she take a rest here, but Francis insists on going home. She then hurries towards the door, and storms out. That night, Francis confides everything in her best friend, they find it very creepy and decide to stay away from Greta. Unfortunately, while Francis is at work the next day, she sees a barrage of messages and missed calls from Greta. She also learns from Erica that the crazy woman had called the house landline about 80 times. And then all of a sudden, the manager tells Francis that someone is looking to meet her. Francis pleads with her manager to send Greta away, but the arrogant boss is too busy for that, so Francis gathers her courage and confronts the freakish woman. Greta, as usual, tries talking in her sweet nature, but Francis gets straight to the point and calls out Greta for her deception. She reveals that she found the bags in the drawer, and one of them had her name on it. Hearing all this, Greta tries to explain herself, but Francis doesn't listen and abruptly walks off. That night, she keeps on receiving texts and calls from the lunatic. In the morning, Francis listens to one of the voicemails, where Greta apologizes and admits that what she did was wrong. But she claims that she did all this due to loneliness, as her husband died, and now her daughter is away. At work however, as Francis is about to serve drinks to a customer. She suddenly notices Greta standing by the road. Even worse, the crazy woman remains there until night, so Francis decides to call the police. But to her dismay, the officer says that Greta has done nothing wrong, it is well within her rights to stand by the road as long as she doesn't harm anyone. That evening, after her shift ends, Francis looks around the place but doesn't find Greta. Francis then heads to the subway and boards a metro. But to her utmost horror. I said it was sorry. Greta claims that she is sorry and just wants to talk, but Francis doesn't want any conversation. She then reaches home by a different route, thinking that she's safe now. Please. Jesus, what? Unfortunately, Greta shows up here as well, having tracked her house address. Greta says that she's lonely and that she deserves a friend. But when Francis still doesn't listen, the crazy bitch spits a chewing gum in her hair and leaves. Fed up with the situation, Francis heads to the police station along with Erica, she wants to file a restraining order against Greta. However, the officer says that in Manhattan, it may take months for the judge to even review her case. This means that Francis is left with no choice but to simply ignore her tormentor. However, the next morning, she starts fearing for Morton's safety. To check if the dog is still alive, Francis arrives outside Greta's house and hides in a corner. She soon notices the woman going out with Morton. And then inside the trash can, she finds a returned mail, which had been sent to Nicola. But the address says that Nicola lives in Brooklyn, contrary to what Greta had claimed. Francis wastes no time and sends a voicemail to Nicola, hoping they can meet and talk about the situation. One night, when Francis returns home from work, she learns that Erica has left for a party. The place is eerily quiet so she's definitely scared a bit. Just then, her dad calls her to ask how she's doing. Turns out Frances isn't on good terms with her workaholic dad after the death of her mother, and this is probably why she came to New York to be on her own. Still, dad loves her a lot and would do anything to be with her. Their conversation is abruptly interrupted when Frances receives a message from Greta. To her utmost horror, the crazy woman is now stalking Erica and has sent a picture of her. Frances immediately calls her best friend and warns her of the situation. Erica cannot see the woman but still, she decides to leave the venue. She walks through the back door, and then through an alley, but Greta keeps clicking pictures of her secretly. Francis receives all these pictures on her phone, making her even worried. At one point, Erica enters a public bus. However, Francis receives another picture which reveals that the bitch is on the same bus. Erica finally sees her as well but gets off the bus quickly. Erica continues to see Greta on the street, 
But the tense situation finally comes to an end when Frances arrives to pick up her friend in a taxi. The next day, Frances finally receives the call that she has been waiting for. It's from the crazy bitch's daughter, Nicola. But upon reaching the meeting location, she finds a woman named Alexa waiting for her. This woman reveals that Nicola actually killed herself four years ago due to her mother's sadistic behavior, and she had never studied in Paris. Alexa was her counselor as she was suffering from alcoholism. The counselor further reveals that Greta is a sick woman who used to confine her daughter inside a box. Later that day, while she's at work, Francis's dad calls, and tells her that Erica has told him what has been happening, warning her to be careful. But then all of a sudden, Greta shows up, having booked a table. Francis urges her boss to kick her out, but the rude man isn't going to do that to a customer. Our poor girl reluctantly obliges and goes to serve the deranged woman. She tries to do her work, but Greta insists that she only wants to talk. Francis refuses, and this is when Greta becomes aggressive and charges towards her. The situation only comes to a halt when several restaurant employees restrain her. In the aftermath, the cops arrive at the scene and take her away. However, the very next morning, she is released from custody, because why not? At this moment, Erica comes up with an idea, which is to use the slow fade technique to Greta. She suggests that Francis apologize to Greta, and says that the problem is her, not Greta, and pretends that she has her own problems to deal with right now. The two friends can then go on a holiday to Mexico, and by the time they arrive, Greta will already have moved on with someone else. Heeding to the advice, Francis approaches Greta at the same church and apologizes to her. She pretends to be sorry for ignoring her, and claims that she was just upset because of her mother's recent death. Francis also says that she'll be going away for a while to clear her mind. Greta understands her situation, and gives her a big hug before departing. In the next scene, we see the lady mixing some chemicals in a bowl of milk. She then feeds it to Morton, which he happily consumes. On the other hand, Francis arrives home after cycling around the city. She nonchalantly prepares a cup of coffee and drinks it. But soon after she does, she becomes dizzy and falls to the ground. During this, she notices Greta approaching her. It seems you forgot to pack. Now, which shoes would you like to bring? This crazy bitch drags Francis outside the house, and puts her in a taxi, pretending that she's sick. Upon reaching her home, Francis notices the dog lying unconscious on the floor. Greta then opens a secret door, which turns out to be behind the piano, and takes her inside. She unlocks her phone using her fingerprint, puts Francis inside a toy chest, and shuts the door. Just then, Francis realizes that it was all just a nightmare. She becomes relieved to see her friend in the house, and her dad also shows up downstairs to pick her up. Francis then hurries to meet her dad, hoping he can take her away from all this madness. However, as soon as she enters the elevator, it suddenly malfunctions. Unfortunately, Francis wakes up inside the chest, it turns out she has been kidnapped after all. Greta then opens the chest, and locks her in the room. Francis can hear Greta playing piano outside, she can only cry in hopelessness when she sees Samantha's ID. Francis realizes that Samantha was kept as a prisoner in the same room she's in, which adds to her lack of hope. Afterwards, Greta uses Francis' phone to text her dad and friends separately. She sends a picture to dad, in which Francis and Erica are enjoying their holidays. Then, she sends another one to Erica, in which Francis and her dad are having a fun time. This gives both of them the false impression that Francis is safe and sound. After a few weeks, dad eventually decides to visit town as he hasn't heard from his daughter for long. But when he meets up with Erica, they finally realize that Francis is missing. Panicked, Dad immediately hires a private detective named Brian to find his daughter. They learn that Greta was a nurse at a local hospital, but she was fired for the misuse of anesthetics. On the other hand, Greta is slowly asserting her way of life onto Francis. She teaches her how to play the piano and punishes her when she makes a mistake. One day, during a cooking lesson, Greta is talking with a cookie cutter in her hand. 
Francis then strikes her hand, causing her little finger to be chopped off, and strikes the bitch in the head, knocking her out. After this, Francis runs throughout the house, trying to find a way out, but it seems that all the doors and windows have been boarded. She runs to the basement, where she shockingly finds Samantha, who is still breathing. But then, Greta suddenly shows up from behind and suffocates her to unconsciousness. When the poor girl wakes up, she is tied onto a bed by both her hands and feet. Afterwards, the detective, Brian, shows up outside Greta's house. Brian then gets straight to the point and asks Greta about Francis, but Greta claims she hasn't seen Francis for a while. As usual, she puts on her charming demeanor and invites him in for some tea. From her room, Francis hears them talk, so she starts screaming and banging her bed with all her might. The sound is faintly heard in the living room, but Greta plays some music and claims it's her hungry dog. She then grabs a bowl and pretends to go upstairs to feed it. While she's away, Brian suddenly spots that the piano is moving slightly, and finally realizes that there's someone behind the wall. But then, the bitch shows up and injects him with a sedative. This causes Brian to slowly pass out and he struggles to keep balance. He brings out his gun, and fires several shots at her, but each of them misses. Eventually, he is knocked out cold, and Greta uses his own gun to kill him. As the days pass, Greta returns to the subway, and plants her green leather bag to find her next victim. We then see that another innocent girl find Greta's handbag and take it. Just like Francis, she makes the same mistake and decides to return it personally. Greta welcomes her like always and starts her routine. When Francis hears them talking, she starts banging again, but Greta dismisses it as her neighbors, who are remodeling the house, just like at the beginning of the film. Greta then gets back to her chair and takes a sip of her tea, and as soon as she does so, she feels dizzy. And then this happens. The hours and hours I searched the goddamn subway for that bag. In a crazy turn of events, we get to know that the innocent girl is none other than Erica. Turns out she spiked Greta's tea with a sedative. Erica then searches through the house, and finds the secret door behind the piano. Without wasting any time, she goes inside and unties her friend. But as they are about to head out, they hear Greta playing the piano again. Realizing that she has regained consciousness, Erica grabs a blunt object and heads out to confront her. Francis also peeks through the door, and this is when Greta grabs her from behind. However, she is so weak from the drug that she soon passes out. In the end, the girls put the psychopath in the same toy chest, and lock it with a small Eiffel Tower trinket. But as they head out to call the police, Greta suddenly regains consciousness, and starts banging on the chest from inside. Okay guys, thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.